Hi, this is Ike Ahmed from the University of Toronto. Uh, I spoke at the American Glaucoma Society recently on a comparison of different new microinvasive glaucoma surgical devices, as well as less invasive glaucoma surgical devices that are on the horizon. And I spoke about four or five newer devices that are either available or soon to be available in the US. The first device is the iSense Inject, which is an implantable rivet design, uh, which is a second generation device from the first generation iSense, which is currently approved in the US. There are two clinical trials underway with the iSense Inject. One is a combination cataract trial comparing FACO plus iSense Inject, two stents, versus FACO alone, a five hundred patient study which has completed enrollment and that will lead to results in the near future. And then another interesting study is a standalone patient population comparing two iSense Injects versus SLT in a phacic, pseudophacic patient population. This is a little bit different than the usual cataract population. Initial enrollment has completed already and we will see the second phase underway. We're also seeing scaffolding stents uh, that are coming to play. These are trimodal action devices that not only create a bypass, but also expand the canal, creating windows as well to allow filtration of fluid through this three o'clock hour device. This is the Hydrus device. This device has completed the US ID study. Uh, it will be soon to be submitted to the FDA, we hope, and we hope to get results published in the near future as well. And this is basically another opportunity to expand the canal in a different action than what we've seen with other stents. Uh, recently, we saw the supraciliary CyPass device be approved uh, in the United States. This device will be released here. And the Glauco Super device, a similar mechanism of action device, is currently undergoing trials. Uh, we'll be completing in the near future as well, comparing this device with FACO versus uh, FACO Plus device. And these devices are now tapping into the alternative mechanism of action, dealing with uv scleral outflow rather than traditional uh, trabecular flow, for which most mixed procedures have basically been working at. And then we, of course, are now in the era uh, back to the BLEP. We've seen the Zen device recently approved and now, re now commercialized in the U.S. This is basically an IB internal device creating a low-lying posterior BLEB uh, procedure that does get us pressures uh, close to where we get with traps. Uh, and, the, and the one procedure that we do in MIGS that has the least likelihood of needing medication. So it's exciting to see this device which provides a bit more efficacy which can be used standalone or with cataract surgery as well. And then finally, I spoke about the InFocus device, which is currently undergoing a U.S. trial. This, actually, this device is actually going to be compared to trabeculectomy in a head-to-head -head randomized trial. Uh, this device uh, has shown potency, again, similar to trabeculectomy, with a very novel material, uh, which seems to be very biocompatible to the human body, including the eye, uh, with results, as we're seeing, uh, that approach trabeculectomy with the safety and the safety margin of having a controlled outflow. So I spoke about numerous devices. We already have over 10 MIGS devices available in the U.S., we're going to see more of these devices come uh, available in, in the future as well. I think it's an exciting time to be in glaucoma, offering all kinds of patients, whether they're combination cataract patients, whether they're standalone, whether it's early in treatment in terms of severity or later, on, later onset. Uh, these, all these mixed devices and less invasive glaucoma devices, I think, are going to have increasing role in our glaucoma treatment paradigm, which really is moving toward interventional glaucoma, treating glaucoma as a surgical disease rather than primarily focusing on medications. Thank you.